fact, I hate them so much I don't want to use it. Sorry, I need this as a rehearsal for myself because I really wanted to say something uh, at the funeral. But I just, it's easy to run into a, you know, just a bit of a flip where I just go backwards. When I first heard the news, I was taken. I, I, I was lost. You know, I thought, God, why would you take him now? You know, he's just becoming a pastor. He's, he wants to go to uh, the hospitals. He wants to preach to older. Like, don't take him now. I, I, you know, Paul said it once. He, there was a bit of anger, and it's bad to feel that way. But I, I kind of thought, I just don't get it. I don't know why. You know, so I walked outside, walked around the house, looked at the skies, and I thought, oh, I'm not ready, Dad, to let you go. I, could, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. But, you know, these things really help. It was actually here that I returned to the Lord in this ministry. Amen. Dad always encouraged, um, wanted me to come down. And I, I, you know, there was a time where Dad and I, we weren't, we weren't spending too much time together. We seen odds. I let it, uh, I kind of let the enemy just... You know, have the way where I, I didn't really, I could, I could do it without him. How stupid, eh? When it was so good to do it with him. But anyhow, you know what? I'm so thankful that I got over that and I come here because imagine, you know. Um, <clears throat> one day I, we were living in Oakwood and uh, my dad said to me, there's a guy down the road just from Oakwood. I'm going up there. You're a great big guy. I don't know if that's why he was trying to say to me. <laughs> you know, you, you two should get along, I guess. He's a great big guy. Oh, oh, all right. I thought, I said to my wife, well, he's probably going to come up here and ask me to come to Monday night. I said, what am I going to say now? You know? <laughs> well, what excuse? I've used them all. <laughs> See? So anyway, Dad comes up and he says, I wouldn't mind you just talking to this guy. His name's George Jenkins. Boy, I didn't realize how powerful that man was until I... So... I said, all right, if that's all, he's in Oakwood, you know, there's only about 15 people that live in Oakwood, I just have to go next door possibly and see this, this fella, and he's not going to bug me about Monday night, perfect. Yeah, that worked out. I went, I went to, uh, and, uh, you know, he says, George, want to introduce you, very proud father of my son, um, you know, I was wondering if you'd say a few words, uh, he's going through this battle and this battle, and, uh. And anyhow, so talking to George, there was something that just hit me. He's just straight. You know, I've been fighting to stay away uh, for, for a while, and I know there's something that just said, let it go. It's time now to come and, uh, and be, uh, you know, to, to get back with the family. And, uh, and I, so it wasn't Dad that asked me to come to Monday nights. It was George. They, they had this plan. They had to. It was, you should have seen how it worked out. So I was talking to him, and I convinced. So I prayed with, that, with George. George come and held on to me, and I said, well, before I do this, because I really wanted to come back, I said, Dad, I need you too. And right then I could just feel, Amen. today's a new day. Amen. Right? So <clears throat> the three of us prayed, and then George looked at me and said, you planning on coming tonight? You know? Had to be a Monday. He says, um, you better be. I looked at him, and he had a good few pounds on me, so I thought, all right, I'll come. <laughs> so from then, I realized how special this kind of group was. I met all kinds of friends that uh, Dad talked about when he first moved to Omimi. Paulo was one of, the thing, one of the guys that Dad talked about. Down the road, coming and walking with the dog. And I said, I know, I know the family. Don't worry, I know Paulo. You know, um... <clears throat> the next person that he was, would bring up, Carlton, uh, and then he wanted to tell me about Donnie. Well, I knew Donnie. Er, everyone in Omimi, he owns Omimi, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Always walking the street, great big glass. <laughs> you know? it was, it was, uh, when I come here and started helping, um, I kind of feel the sense of, uh, I, I just, I realized that this is something that I had to do. And, you know, my wife... Um, she had lost her mom and dad and sister and had nobody left. And uh, she really struggled believing that really could be a God. And dad worked on her and worked on her and worked on her. Eh? And I thought, oh, you've got one fight. <laughs> you know, and so this is going to be good to step by. I'm stepping back. I'll watch it, but I'm stepping back. And, you know, it's funny because it was George Jenkins again at the Coronation Hall when Kim gave her life to God too. 
And I guess when I look back, it, it's it's because of the people here. When I when I uh, one of the things that one person I really want to thank is actually Suzanne. When I when I seen her all the time with the with filming this, I never realized how important that was going to be until time like this. I get always have the opportunity now to go back and see Dad, whether he's in with Harry uh, in the general store. Uh, talking about the uh, the rappers coming, <laughs> but uh, I.